Well, that's a mighty it. Oh. Um, my name is Tam. To those who know me here today, kia ora. Um, to those who don't know me, um, I guess I better, ta- uh, better tell you a little bit about who I am and why I'm speaking here today because um, might not be as well known as the other two rangatahi um, speakers here today. So um, I'm from Tukuro, right? Lots of rangatahi. Um, but unfortunately, no one seems to get out of there unless they play sport, um, which is really upsetting. And um, I went to a decile one um, high school, but somehow um, I managed to get uh, 300 excellence credits um, through NCA level one, two and three. And I got ducks in my high school. Um, I got um, scholarships to every university in New Zealand, but um, ended up taking the 30k to go to Vic. Um, became the first person in my whānau to get uh, to go to university um, and to get my degree. And at the age of 21, I'm currently the full-time president of um, 22,000 students at Victoria University. Okay, uh, okay, I'll, 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 that wasn't quite how I wanted my speech to go. I was going to go rattle off all the things that were that my achievements, but what I was trying to get at there is, um, is that um, none of these things I actually achieved by myself. And um, I want to, oh, I was able to contribute to a lot of these successes, but I wouldn't say I achieved them um, on my own. And um, I think that's the thing about successful people is like we like to tell ourselves these like um, big highlight reels about our lives and um, define ourselves by um, our achievements um, and like to tell ourselves these stories about how we cracked the day. Um, you know, smooth out all the wrinkles and, and forget all the people that were there. So all of these achievements, right, they're interesting, but um, I didn't do them myself, certainly not. And there were a lot of people that gave me hand ups um, to get to that place. And um I think when we're speaking to rangatahi and, and being a rangatahi speaker, I, I guess, um, it's actually not helpful, I think, being like, oh, I, I, you know, this is, these are all my successes, look at this, because it doesn't reflect um, all those nights where, you know, you, you sat there and you're like, oh, nah, I, I don't think I can do this. Or when you sat there and you're like, nah, I'm actually not good enough for this. And um, I think the second thing that's wrong with those corridors is that your successes are never fully your own. And I, I mean, some people might contest that, but I, don't, I certainly don't believe any of um, my successes were my own. Um, and so I'm going to start again and tell you the real story, so my story. And I actually, it's funny because I've, I've gone through these two kind of weird phases. Um, my mate today here is here. Actually, I said I wasn't going to give her a shout out, but I'm going to now. And I remember, should be, you know, what's your story? And I remember I would just dwell on all the all the negative things, yet, sorry, um, where I'd be like, you know, um, what, what's going on? <laughs> anyway, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Um, but um, I'd, I'd dwell on all the negative things and I'd be like, you know, oh, man, this is, all the, this is all the rough stuff that happened to me. But then all the good stuff started happening and then I was like, oh, you know, this is all the mean stuff that's mm-hmm. happening. This is totally me. Wow, just making a mess up here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I'll start again with my story. This is my real story. And um, so I'll start again. So ko o, who am I? I'm heri tēnei no Ngāti Awa me Waikato Tainui hoki. Um, my whānau descend from the beautiful city of Whakatane, from one of the iwi there, Ngāti Awa, um, or people of the river. And um, my whānau are also from um, the iwi Tainui in the, from the Waikato, um, um, from Te Tupuna Awa, so um, the biggest, mightiest river in um, Aotearoa, contestable again, I know. Um, but uh, I, um, so I associate myself and, and beginning to see myself more as a river, and um, I draw lots of strength and pride from my iwi and my tipuna, so that's the first place I'll start is that, um, you know, that's that's the first, um, I guess, reason for my success. Um I whānau mai aho ki Tāmaki Makaurau, um, engari i tipuaki um, aho kei kōnei, kei o tautahi. Um, um, so I'm going to start with my mama. She, she, she drives everything I do, and my mama is a hearty woman, right? So um, my mama and my, my big brother, they were going through some pretty rough times. Um, and once I started growing inside of her, um, she she made the decision that she needed to leave that situation, and um, oh, m- for the safety of my brother and I. Um, so she she threw my brother in the car. She was heavily hapu, um, and and she left. And you know we had the clothes on our back. We had the car we were in and each other. And looking back, you know I used to think about that and be so sad, but 
I'm actually really happy about that because that's probably my greatest blessing and um, we didn't need anything else and, and looking back that's that's definitely another person that I would say contributed to all the successes, my mama. Um, so I was born in South Auckland, um, she pushed me out, we moved quickly up north to Paihia and I lived with my, my grandparents for a bit and um, that's my, my other biggest blessing is my komatua. Um, so my granddad's from Ngaraudu and um, Taranaki, um, he's a carver. He's a painter, an author, a poet. He was a Mormon priest, um, three times defended by David Longy in court, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, knows the Consumer Guarantees Act back to front. He's had three heart attacks, right? But he will still whoop all your asses in a game of golf. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I had to say that. Um, and then my nana is, is just as amazing. I won't go on as much, but she keeps him under control. So I think that pretty much just speaks for itself. Um, and then after that, my mum met my matua whāngai, so my dad, um, when I was a couple months old. And um, honestly, since then, we've been just the best of friends. And I would say I get my best and my worst attributes from him. Um, so I'm, I'm mean, stubborn and grumpy sometimes. And I don't know, you can take those however you want. Um, so we all moved down to Christchurch um, when I was a little bit older. I think I was like two or three. Um, and... Yeah, I, I pretty much grew up here since I was nine. It's really interesting being back here. Like I've, I've been o here over the years, but um, it's interesting being back here, especially um, after, you know, the big earthquakes and um, the terrorist attacks on March 15th. It's, um, I, I look at it a lot differently. Um, so so um, I grew up in Shirley. I don't know where that is in reference to this because I don't think I ever came into town. But um, I was there when my school hall was opened in 2001 by Helen Clark. That was pretty cool. I was there when the Palms got built. Not sure if that's still around. Um, and ironically, I was actually told twice on my way to school to go back to my own country, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, but I guess... Um, I can't speak for all rangatahi that have actually grown up here, but I think in the time that I was here, I actually found it quite hard being Māori in Christchurch. Um, but it's okay because I ended up moving to Tokoroa, and that's just like brown people everywhere. So that was a really nice contrast for me. And I'm sure if I stayed for longer, I would have found my people, but it's, it's all good. Um, so Tokoroa, for those who don't know, is a, um, it's a small, mighty, hearty town in the Waikato, uh, the South Waikato. Um, and I made Tokoroa my home, and Tokoroa certainly made me. Um, I think um, being out of communication with my Māori family um, throughout my childhood, um, it confused my identity of who I was as a rangatahi Māori. And um, so I think moving to Tokoro was a blessing for me because um, I got to be around so many beautiful brown people, whether they were Māori, whether they were Cook Island Māori, Samoan, Fijian, Indian, all of these things. Um, it, was, it was mean to be brown and, and, and I am very thankful for Tokoro. And... Um, I felt I didn't have to bear that burden as much that I felt in Christchurch, like I didn't feel like I could be myself. Um, but, you know, with the good times definitely came the, I guess, darker times. And um, during high school, I, I definitely struggled with um, a tiny father, some of us might know well, might not, but um, depression. And um, it was for a few reasons, um, partly because um, at the time, I think I was like 12, I had just been diagnosed with lupus, which is like an autoimmune disease. Um, and they were telling me, you know, oh, you're, you're the youngest patient in the Waikato. And I was like, oh, mean, that's really cool. Um, but um, another reason was, you know, my parents were both working around the clock. My dad's a truck driver and my mum's a um, caregiver for um, elderly and disabled people. And, you know, I, I wasn't seeing them at night times on the weekends. They were just never really around, but they always loved me. And I'm always going grateful for that um, but I think that uh, that really took a toll on me as um, you know not having them around as much as I would have liked to um, and then I guess at the root of that all was that I felt I had no sense of cultural identity really anchoring me or grounding me during all of these feelings that I was feeling and um, but I, I would say what got me out of that um, was by far the people that were around me um, you know, my grandparents would just talk to me for hours when I was just absolutely hysterical. I just felt, you know, there's no place for me here. Well, I don't add any value to anybody's life. Um, and they would just say to me, you know, you're, you're not a burden. You're your mother's daughter and you have her bravery. 
and I had some teachers who really believed in me and um and that meant the world to me and you know I think teachers are really underrated actually because I think they changed my life and every single day they would reaffirm you know you're smart and 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 there is mana inside of you whether you know it or not and um that meant a lot to me and I had a, a lot of friends and family there and all of my friends we all worked at KFC um for like three years and um and that was fun and you know we would be grinding we would be doing like 30 40 hours a week on top of high school so a lot of truancy not good don't do it but um we were all grinding it out in the hopes that you know one day um we'll we'll, we'll make something of ourselves and um so going back to all those uh, those achievements at the beginning which didn't quite get the response I was having I hope you would all sit there and be like oh hey, how's this but anyway um <laughs> That those are never ever my greatest achievement in life. My greatest achievement has and always will be the people and the town that shaped me and made me who I am. Um, and um, they made me who I needed to be for myself and for, for my whanau and for the people that I represent and they helped me find my why. Um, so with all of that, I moved away 500 kilometres away from, um, from home to go to Victoria University because, you know, um, all these people were like making all these decisions for us in Tokoroa. You know, you had you had like oh no, no offense to national, but you had Louise Upston down the road in Topol that just never came into our lecture. Her her office was absolutely covered in cobwebs and just just damaged. And you had the South Waikato District Council that was just made up of all these people from like Potato and Tito, and there was just all these decisions being made for us. We didn't understand what they were, and we didn't have a say on how that happened. So I was like, nah, I actually don't like that. So I moved down to Wellington. I was like, this is apparently where it happened. So I was like, I'm going to learn how it happens, take it back, and change some things around. Um, so kept up the same grind, and, um, you know, every single day, even when moving down there and just being like, damn, I can't believe I'm the only Māori person in my hall. Um, it was okay because I just, you know, I, I thought about my hometown. I thought about the people that, that drove me, and... Um, I still remember my first protest outside the Ministry of Justice. I, I still remember the first time voting. I still remember the first election I ran in um, for equity officer of my university. But what stands out the most to me would definitely be the lifelong friends that I've made. And I know that sounds corny as well, honestly. Like, I've met some just amazing people over my time, not just in Wellington, but from all across the Motu. So um, those, those are people that still to this day continue to shape and mould me. Um, so a couple of years later, fast forward a little bit, um, I ran a six-week campaign for president. Um, so, yeah, like um, um, you guys said, like there's 20,000 students, so it's pretty hard to, like, crack those votes. So I ran my campaign um, and ended up being um, elected. I'm really proud to be the president of Victoria University of Wellington. Um, for those who don't know what that is, it's like head girl, but, like, on steroids. It's, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> um and I think that's pretty trippy. Like, I was literally just thinking about it last night. Like, I'm literally the first person to go to my family now. The, the president of, like, so I, I, I constantly am just, like, doubting myself. Like, are you sure you know what's going on? But it's okay. I've got, I've got supportive people around me, and that's, you know, the real message of this court at all. Um, but um, being there made me see how much of a positive impact tertiary education or just higher education can have, not only on people, not only on whānau, but on those cycles of inequality and of and, and of poverty and um you know that's not saying that I got my degree and everything's fine you know I I still you know my whānau still struggle I I still sometimes am sending money home to them but that's not the point it's 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 being able to give them the tools to understand why things are the way they are or to understand why you're working 50 60 hours a week and still can't get off the bottom of the pile so it's making them understand like like why that is and, and make them understand my mahi and why I don't think that should be the reality for anyone. Um, and, I, and I see our toe to Māori doing this as well, you know, like it, the, the meanest thing for me about being at uni is that, you know, when you educate a, a Māori, you aren't just teaching one person, they're taking it back and and teaching their whānau and their communities and, and really empowering them with tools to be able to like manifest their own self-determination. I think that's so important. Um, and and I want all rangatahi that want to pursue higher education to be able to do that without facing all these like unnecessary like burdens and barriers that you know just stop them from wanting to do this or succeeding while they're there because knowledge really is power. Um, while acknowledging that uni is not the only place to get that, I do think um, for those who might not have access to more traditional means of knowledge, this is you know something that is really empowering. Um, so I'm really happy that my full-time job and my first full-time job at the age of 21 is 
is just full time advocating for the issues that I care about. Um, and so um, through that, I've been able to contribute to our university's mental health services. I'm getting an increase of $3.3 million. I'm currently working with the university on developing the first standalone sexual harassment policy that um, helps people, yeah, oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, that, that outlines, you know, um, that, you know, if anything goes down, you know, between students or staff or staff and staff or student and student, it makes clear the processes and, and how justice can be resolved. And it's a restorative justice process, which means a lot to me. So, um, you know, it's, it's a real mean. I've only been doing it for three months. So I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Um, but I, 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 I never imagined that that would be my first full time job, um, that it would be actually changing the atmosphere and the environment that thousands and thousands of people lived in every single day. And so here we are at Te Putahi Tanga, um, speaking as a rangatahi advocate. And I remember when I got the email to speak here, I was like, well, you know, I, I certainly like advocate for a whole bunch of um, students, but, you know, does that necessarily translate into advocating for rangatahi Māori? And then I was like, you know, my mahi might not directly be about that, but I am a rangatahi Māori. And I think a lot of the things that I went through in my story are reflective of what we all go through at some point or another. And um, I found that the, the, the thing that helped me, you know, to deal with those and address those, and, and I say to everyone here that has any form of power or any position of power that works with rangatahi, is that we have to be able to name these tanifa. Otherwise, we're just sitting there, just just haunted by these feelings that we can't, we don't know what they are. And if you can't name them and you can't see them, then how can you ever begin to address them? And and so I started... Oh, thanks. <laughs> And so, so looking back at that that whole story, I started to understand, you know, the things that went down with like my mum and my mum and her partner, and and um, the mum I felt as a Maori woman, not quite knowing what that meant, and then finding out what it meant and feeling so much shame that I that I didn't know my fucker papa, or that I that I didn't know the real, or you know, I wasn't too too enough. Um, I learned that 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 tanifa had a name, and that's intergenerational trauma. And that's a that's a consequence of colonization, right? Because without knowing that, you blame yourself for not being good enough or not feeling good enough, but it's not your fault. It's not your whanau's fault. None of us can go back in time and stop it. And none of us as one peop as one person can stop what's happening. But but we can we can grow and we sorry I take just what I just said back we can change it sorry and we and we can do that in our everyday capacity you don't have to be a politician you don't even have to be in a position of leadership or what people think it is everyone has power and it lies in pockets and for ordinary people that lies in the collective and so you know understanding what that is we can use our power so me for example um I might not be, you know, affecting massive policy within the government, but I do that by decolonizing the spaces that I'm in. And universities, those are beasts, you know, like. <laughs> those, those are the most colonial constructs because they think there's only one way to learn. And it's just like, nah, not at all. And, um, you know, and, and so how do we make sure that our rangatahi are able to patu this tanifa, right? So... So we teach, oh, are there any MPs left? Because I'm like, this is for y'all. Okay. Oh, yes. Well, well you know, we, we, we teach about, you know, the truth of this country in schools. You know, it's not, you don't have to go and change the whole system. We teach the truth. So, you know, we learn about the Taranaki Wars. We learn about Parihaka. We learn about the Waikato Wars. We learn about, you know, Te Ao Māori, Mātauranga Māori, traditional ways of learning about things like climate change and even the most simplest thing like compassion and being a good human being, you know. And we stop punishing kids um, by making them volunteer. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, we make kids pick up rubbish as a punishment and that's not a good way to show them what volunteering is. Anyway, um, and and I think a big thing too is that we stop being harsh to each other as Maori, okay? Because none of us are to blame for this, and we need to we need to stop being so ratchet to each other. We are so sad to each other, you know. And and 
Oh, t- I'm sorry, I know I've talked to you, so I'm almost done. Um, and, and that leads to identity, right? And that's the other tanifa that I think could be, um, you know, really smashed through education again. Um, that when we learn about the true history of the whenua that we stand on and we strengthen our collective identity, because if we taught the truth about Aotearoa in schools, it wouldn't just serve Māori, it would serve every single person that lives here and grows here and thrives here. Um, and I think we need more wānanga, right? Because it's not all going to be through schools, you know? So we need more wānanga where people can learn about their whakapapa, learn about the real, learn about all those things that make us feel whakamā, you know? Um, what else can we do? We, we, we support them in finding that identity because, you know, it's not, you know, mental health, right? Mental health is the big thing that is you know just just tearing us down right now sorry not mental health mental distress and mental illness and my firm belief is that if everyone has an identity Māori or not they have something to anchor them and you can never change the bad things that happen in life right we every we could fix every systematic problem but that wouldn't change say your your koro passes away that's not going to stop you from feeling upset but what your identity does is it gives you the tools to be resilient and to and to take every hit and just you know let it strengthen you let it let it sand you off to you know something that is smooth and that is together and strong um And I think once we begin to do that, there becomes a purpose. And that purpose is to be a good uri. And that purpose is to be a good tipuna. And to be insulated by thousands and thousands of years of of love and support and knowledge. And, you know, the more I learn, the more I like, the more I see that actually we don't have to look outside of Aotearoa for the answers that we face. We just look inside. We don't need to look any further, you know, like I think of Tohu and Tefiti who who were the creators of peaceful and passive resistance who have inspired, you know, Gandhi and Martin Luther King. So I think, you know, these issues that we bring to light throughout this um, conference, I hope that we remember that we don't have to look outside. We, we, we know the answers. They've always been here. We just have to make our journey towards reconcil- reconciliating, reconciling. Oh, no, uni didn't teach me that. <laughs> Obviously not that great. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway, um, that's the most important thing. And that's what I want to say is, is my two big things is, um, you know, we don't have to stray far outside of ourselves to find our answers, which is so cool. I like that theme that was said before, you know, we lead, you follow. I think that's amazing. And, um, and the other one is, um, you know, People, I think, are also the answer to um, everything that that affects us. And um, I just wanted to acknowledge every, everyone here today. And I can't wait to hear more of the corridor. And I, I've talked long enough, but I'm really keen to talk to anyone and everyone. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you want to talk more. I'm keen to have a corridor with you. Nō reira, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, ka pai te, ka pai te rā.